John Clouser, please. He is Zooming right now with England. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand but that. But he should be off in a second. Okay, that Hang would be... on. <laughs> Thank you. Or call back in a few minutes, maybe well, that would uh, work. Uh, uh, the only thing I worry about is if I hang up, then I might never be able to get back in touch again, you know, because your phone's going to be ringing off the hook. What it do you has th- been since 2.50. It's a very exciting day. Yes. Various uh, Swedish uh, news media and, and, and um, uh, European and, and uh, American news media. And this is Sweden on the phone. Oh, hang on. They're on the phone right now. Hang on. Just a second. Hello? Hello. Uh, my name is Adam Smith, and I'm calling from the website of the Nobel Prize. I, Aha! Uh, I've been talking all, all, all day with... Uh, uh, with various news, I have never had yet to hear anything <laughs> from uh, the Swedish Academy. Well, you're uh, gosh, my goodness. Well, in fact, I'm not the Swedish Academy, but we have this tradition of recording extremely short interviews with new laureates. Um, just, okay. And so, if if you if you can, I know you're on another Zoom call at the moment, but if you were able to talk to me for four, three or four minutes, that would just be wonderful. What do you think? Okay, hang on just a second. Yeah. Get it. Uh, can I talk to the guys from the Swedish Nobel Committee? <laughs> if you can pause for a second. Yes, absolutely. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay, well, um, first of all, many, many congratulations on the award. Thank you. Uh, you have, I guess you have already been, as you said, on calls all morning. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, took me a long time before I even got a cup of coffee. <laughs> I got waked up at three in the morning. <laughs> My goodness, what a start to a very long day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so far it uh, took me uh, over an hour to even get my pants on. <laughs> there were so many phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, slow progress with the regular things in life, but nice, <laughs> n- nice distractions. This this work that's been awarded. I mean, you you were the person who thought that it might be possible to test Bell's theorems in the laboratory, and people did people yes, didn't believe. Well, I I I, I had the uh, idea independently with uh, from uh, Abner Shimoni and Mike Horn, and then we uh, wrote a small uh, gave a talk. I uh, wrote an abstract and gave a talk in uh, an APS meeting, right, physical society meeting, and uh, we got together at that meeting and uh, decided to uh, share our resources and, and we published uh, a what's called the CHSH, Clauser, uh, Horn, Shimoni, and Holt uh, paper in 1969, and that was kind of the first proposal for d- doing the experiment. Mm-hmm. But I gather- and then, uh, in 70, it, then in seventy two, I came to, uh, or I, right in sixty nine actually I uh, got my degree at Columbia and uh, came to Berkeley uh, and, and actually then uh, collaborated with Stuart Friedman, who was a graduate student. Uh, this was became his PhD thesis uh, at Cal. And uh, we did the first uh, experimental test of, Be- of Bell's theorem. But I, I gather that many great physicists um, uh, didn't believe you, and you were turned away by people such as Feynman. Oh, indeed, yes. Uh, they, uh, everybody at the time, uh, uh, my whole faculty at Columbia, uh, I, while I was doing the experiment, I uh, had a short conversation where Feynman kind of threw me out of his office. He was very offended that I should even uh, be considering the possibility that uh, uh, quantum mechanics um, might not be, uh, give the correct predictions. And only through the, uh, the very kind efforts of uh, Charlie Towns and, and Howard Shugart here at Cal Berkeley, 
was I able to do the experiments. And afterwards, all of my faculty still at Columbia and, uh, said, uh, Why, what, a, what a waste of time. You got the, uh, uh, the results that everybody expected. Now start doing some real physics. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the thought of this bold young man hoping to topple quantum mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was having fun. It was uh, ch challenging experiments. I, I thought it was important at the time, even though uh, everybody uh, told me I was crazy and was going to ruin my career by doing it. And to some extent, I did. I've never, I've never been a, a professor. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, but I had a lot of fun doing uh, some really challenging experimental physics. Didn't have any money to do the work, uh, and so Stu Friedman and I uh, had to build everything from scratch. Uh, spent a lot of time in the shop uh, uh, cutting metal and whatever, and then uh, I went, uh, after he got his degree, he left and went to Princeton, and uh I continued on doing uh, three more experiments, and all of these uh, had to build everything from scratch. So uh, I, I guess you'll... there was very little, very little money, and so I was basically cobbling together old junk uh, or scrap uh, from yeah, the phys uh, UC physics department. I, yeah, I heard you were famous for scavenging people out of the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was a lot of stuff unused in, in store rooms if you, if you recognize what it is. <laughs> Most people uh, have the faintest idea and they just sort of say, well, it might be useful and then we'll put it in the store room. And so I would rummage around and say, oh, hey, I can use this. <laughs> you, know, you know there was a famous, there was a, there was a you know, there was a medicine laureate called Oliver Smithies who had exactly yes. the same approach. And people used to write NBG Bokfo on the, the equipment that they put out in the corridor. And it stood for no bloody good, but OK for Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm told I use I was working in labs uh, later on. Uh, some very famous people, um, uh, Oppenheimer and Lawrence and whatever, and I'm told that they were also uh, scavengers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great tradition and, yes. re and, and really a wonderful encouragement to people out there that you can be a Nobel laureate and not be a professor. Oh <laughs> uh, well, whatever. So I guess they were all right. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it. In that respect, it did ruin my career. That's why nobody <laughs> offered me uh, was interested in, in hiring me on uh, the fact that I had a great difficulty uh, uh, finding a job, and so I went off to Livermore Lab uh, to do. Uh, control fusion plasma physics experiments. Uh, so uh, uh, <laughs> that was, I, I proved that I was a decent experimentalist <laughs> by doing the I think we experiment. Can, yeah, I think that much is proved, and uh, it all t <laughs> it all turned out well in the end. Um, yes. Anyway, it's it's an absolute joy to speak to you, and we. I look forward My to pleasure. I look forward to speaking a great deal more in the future. We'll record a lot. Okay, I will assume that I will f finally get uh, some dates and times of where, uh, what I'm expected to do. <laughs> yes, you will. You, so over the coming days, you'll be sent lots of information by the Nobel Foundation. Great. And okay. you'll know everything. Thank you so much and many, many Okay, my pleasure. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye. If you enjoyed this moment... We have another special episode you won't want to miss on Nobel Prize origin stories. We present clips of laureates recalling formative moments and Adam explores the unexpected factors that can shape the lives and careers of these great minds. Find it on Acast or wherever you listen to podcasts.